Here we go, folks. Look at this. Let's just get right into it. The greed chart is flowing, and we are seeing it get up there close to the extreme uh, greed we saw over the last day. It jumped up another two points. And I got to tell you something. When I see this, I absolutely feel like money's there to be made. Not in the sense that you're thinking, because as we get up there to the extreme greed, I believe that is going to be the, ta the tall tale sign that it is extreme sell and we could be seeing a short term sell off and it could be the final leg with everything contracting everything else uh, it could get ugly remember i said about a month ago that we were down there close to extreme fear and i said look this is the time most likely to be acquiring and buying for the short term and if you see a month ago it was 28 it jumped all the way up there because it's been rolling up now we're at the other end of that spectrum, and I did want to start out with that. We got a lot to talk about. The markets were moving, some big stocks were gaining, and it's time to make cash with this. So oh, I'm kind of excited about it. Before we get into it, make sure you take advantage of the Moo Moo stocks down below. If you haven't yet, what are you waiting for? $100 using the link in the description gets you five free stocks, 1,000 gets you 15. Each stock can be worth up to 2,000 a piece, plus they got the free premium courses. Take advantage of it and the Weeble down below. Any, any deposit, a penny, a dollar, using my link gets you up to 12 free stocks worth up to 30600 Take advantage of it. Then join me at the YouTube uh, community. Down below you can join or over at Patreon. See what I'm buying and selling, the private Discord, the portfolios, and the private videos. All right, now, uh, we talked about that. And, of course, I wanted to show you how the markets did. Because once we come out here, you can see they closed on fire everything green i did a video earlier uh, talking about the tesla stock price prediction the neo stock price prediction and the xpung stock price prediction and you saw uh they rolled up and you got neo with a nice solid six percent day and sonovus energy up a little bit and tesla finally did get to the party when i talked earlier they were actually down a little bit uh, the bonds once again you're seeing a little bit of money moving out of that uh, but i gotta tell you that's because they see a rate hike coming from the Fed very, very soon. And the question becomes for those filing the bonds, TMF and some of the other things, when will the Fed pivot? When will we see them loosening the reins? All right, do we beat inflation? There's two kind of avenues here. One, if the Fed has successfully done what they needed to do and we are going to hit a little small recession as he, they like the mild recession as the, uh, the Fed likes to call it, well, then we should see inflation drop slowly but surely. Or are they wrong? Are we not going to see a recession? Is the American economy going to keep going like a freight train no matter what the Fed does? And the Fed has to jump rates all the way up to 6%. If the Fed has to jump rates to 6%, what do you think is going to happen to the bonds and TMF and all that? They're going to get hit a little bit. It's not like it's the end of the world you would eventually see the Fed top out. Just could take a little longer. That's why I said by the end of 2024, I'm not buying these for a one to uh, three week you know, journey here. I'm buying this for years. I think uh, as we see a TMF doing their thing, I think it slowly but steadily moves the right direction that I need to do. Now, I told you before, I think this is a sidewinder market and it, it looks just like that to me. I know other people out here watching Say, hey, it's running, it's running. Is it though? Is it really running? As you look here and you can see the kind of sidewinder here, you get the all the way up and down, up and down. Now we're up. And what did I tell you? We're up there close to what? Well, the greed. We're getting up there close to that extreme greed. What happened the last time we were up that, that extreme greed? We got all the way up to 4179, close to that 4200. I think it was 4190 something during that day. And it collapsed back down now. Now we're back up there close within, you know, 49 points hitting the 4,200. I told you, I thought, in my opinion, based on all the data I saw, that really what we're looking for is a run between 3,850 to 4,250. And right now we're 100 points off that top edge. I'm not surprised to see the market anywhere in there. But eventually, everything's going to come down to the data. Is the data going to be strong enough to push it up to that 5,000 level that I heard some people predicting we could get to by the end of this year? Or do we see what a lot of people are calling for? And that is the leading economic indicators. Eight out of 10 are negative. They're not lying. 
we're going to see a downturn coming by the end of this year. Uh, so do we believe the data or do we believe everybody just saying, hey, technically it's going to be great and don't worry about fundamentals. What do you think? All right. Is it short term? We, we ride this thing and then we try to time it or do we just say, look, the data is saying sometime in the next six to 12 months, there's going to be a major downturn in the economy. Uh, the stock market should follow. Or is it topsy-turvy world where it doesn't? I tell you what I'm doing. Obviously, I continue to load up on the bonds and I buy some inverse and I got my long positions that are there, but I'm slowly taking profit on the green days. So uh, that's what we're looking at. Now, I got to tell you, uh, we talked about what do we got in here? I wanted to discuss the two stocks that did well. Obviously, NEO. Uh, we talked about the NEO stock price prediction earlier. And I believe it was like uh, around $14, $15 a share in the next 12 months. So that could be around a 50% gain if you follow that. Now, I'm not sure where we go with that, but you can see over the last month, it's had a good run, 12.34% from here. And Tesla, we talked about, I think by the end of 2024, there could be a chance to see this thing run. And this is a big one, but I thought there is still a chance to see this thing get up there close to that $300 mark by the end of 2024. So in the next year and nine months, could we see that? I think so. I think we get through the recession and we'll, we'll go from there. But I know there's people that don't believe and when I, when I say that. And of course, we do have Ethereum out there, which you can see right now. And as we look year to date, 73.47, no complaints. Was up above 21, back down a little bit. So I'm just watching that one. Keep buying my, my Ethereum, my weekly Ethereum purchases now. There are some out there. I gave you the positives, where we could run. There are others, though, that I'm more in that camp now that believes not that it's like, oh, it's the end of the world, but we're going to have that final capitulation, that you're going to see a recession, that you're going to see the markets retest lows. And that's just normal. It's, a, it's the normal cycle. You go through, you have the growth, you stagnate, and then you have the recession. You try to avoid recession. Uh, depression, and then you move back on to the growth, another bull cycle. And we're in that recession part. And usually what happens is the stock market follows suit. And you can see 27% at least. That's what he thinks the S&P 500 will tank right now. So he's thinking um, we're getting down there low 3,000s, real low 3,000s. That's like 31, 3,200. And that's Jeremy Grantham. And then he's not alone now. There's a new one today. And there's no reason to wait. Sell U.S. stocks now before the S&P 500 tanks over 20%, strategist says. Where are they from? And I always like to see some of these things. Uh, uh, we got chief market strategist at FS Investments, and they think they could tumble about 22%. That hits about where I thought. I already said if we have a recession, I expect to see the, the stock market get down to about 3,300. And you might be saying, well, what, what are we looking at here, Mo? What's 3,300? Right here, the S&P 500. And so I thought this would get down around 3,300, which would actually be below here. Um, minimum though, minimum, I thought 3,600 would definitely get retested somewhere in 2023. And so I continue to buy my stocks with that in mind. If I am wrong, of course the portfolio would take a hit, but if I'm right, if I'm right, I'm able to make money on the way down, flip it, get into those bull positions, and just smile all the way back during the next few years of the bull cycle. So we'll see. I still have a, a good mix. The mix is slowly coming down for how many longs I have compared to the inverse and bonds. And I want to keep buying more and more bonds above anything else. And that's what I'm doing right now. I like them. I think that's the safe way to go right now, especially with the markets run up. But that was another example of uh, people out there seeing where the market could go. But the biggest thing I'm worried about, and you can see this in Yahoo today, Biden will threaten Social Security, Medicare, and bumble into the first default in the nation's history if he doesn't negotiate raising the debt ceiling with Republicans, Kevin McCarthy says. So there's a battle brewing down in D.C., and it's the debt ceiling. I remember 2011. That's when they downgraded the U.S. debt, and the markets got punished. It was like 10 to 15 percent in a short period of time. It rebounded quickly, but not before having that hit. So we got a couple of things going on here. You tell me why I should be just overly optimistic and convince me. Will we default? No, I don't think that'll ever happen, but it's actually starting to get priced in there. Uh, if you look at the credit swaps, I think they're up into the teens now 
for the probability of it happening, which in my mind just it blows my mind. Like it could get to that point. Um, but uh, from what I'm reading out of DC is they said there's no way it's just going to pass clean cut with no no offers at all. That's just not going to happen. So something's going to have to give. And either they vote on it to push it out to next year and they use it as a, a tactic to, as in um, what's going to happen with the elections and everything else. And if that happens, that could be pressure on the market, even into 2024 then. And so there's a lot of things happening. But at the end of the day, if nothing happens by, what is it, June, July, then you would see the markets absolutely tanking because of this alone, even during a bull cycle. And so add that in with a possible recession, add it in with financial stresses. This just adds to the mix. And unfortunately, it's not something I feel all rosy about. And I don't I don't I'm not going to sit back here and just keep thinking that it's going to happen where the market's going to explode higher. It doesn't matter what happens in D.C. It doesn't matter what happens with the, the debt ceiling, because I remember 2011. I got burned. Well, I'm not getting burned this time around. If they wait up to the last minute, and even, even if they do still pass it like that happened back then, the downgrades can come because it was such a risk. And that's one of the things I think possibly could happen this time unless they do vote in to extend it to the end of this year. So we'll wait and see. I'm not sure how it goes, but I did want to bring it up. What do you think down below? Who's right? Who's right? Uh, should we have less spending or should they just pass a clean cut debt ceiling. You tell me. All right, folks, if you haven't done it, take advantage down below. Get your free stocks from Weeble and Moomoo and come on over and join me at the Patreon or sign up here down below for YouTube. I'd appreciate the support. Uh, now, that's all I got for you today. I think I'm going to run down to Cadobas, maybe get some uh, a little bowl there, some chips and cheese and enjoy a nice meal. I appreciate you stopping by. Let's get out there and make some money.